Welcome to the worship services of the Crossroads United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Adrian Zachary, and I am excited that you have joined us on this morning. I would ask you to stick around following this sermon so that you might share with us your information on the website that is listed below. I ask you to like us, to log in, and to let us know who you are so that we might be able to contact you in the future.
Yeah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Come on, take it back. And 
they were crying out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the, all the four living creatures fell down on their faces and before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And if you will allow me to use the text and this title for this moment, the beloved community. Let us pray. Gracious God in heaven, we come before you on this glorious day, just pausing just to say thank you. As the text reminds us to come before your throne with thanksgiving. So we come, God, now just praising and thanking you for who you are and whose we are. We are blessed to be the children of God and we are mindful of who we are on this day. We just want you to know how much we adore you, how much we love you, and how much we thank you for being our Father and that we are your children. That we come from every tongue, every tribe, every nation. We come, God, now from every corner every part of the globe. And so as we come now just to say glory, glory, glory to the Lamb of God, accept our worship. Let our worship be a sweet smelling fragrance in your nostril on today. Amen and amen. The beloved community on today. A new study analyzing data from 733 U.S. counties revealed that homicide, robbery, burglary, and larceny rates are decreased the more people in the country were active in black Protestant churches. Where it can do the most good, the black church is doing the most good, the study found. Faith may be the particularly most effective in building social ties and support, setting moral norms, and investing communities with a sense of meaning and purpose reduces cynicism, the report find. What was clear in the research is that the black church matters for black lives particularly in inner city neighborhoods where there are struggles with poverty, crime, and unemployment, the black church was seen as the one best community institution for addressing social problems in the community. The black church were to move out in disadvantaged areas, that the things that were plaguing or confronting the citizenship might really go downhill is what the study found. In 1963, a sermon by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by the name of Loving Your Enemy 
which was published in his book, Strength to Love, addresses the role of unconditional love in the struggle by the beloved community. The beloved community is a term that was first coined in the 20th century by the philosopher or theologian Josiah Royce. The beloved community, my brothers and sisters, does not mean a formal community. It is not meant to use or to be used to formulate those that are of a biological connection. But what it does mean by beloved, it is those that find themselves particularly connected or bonded by relationships of friendships, parishes, 12-step programs, prayer groups, or our church families. Communities are not necessarily organizations. Communities are those that find themselves or define themselves in ways by which they are gathered around people and proclaim themselves as connected as sisters and brothers, one in and defined by their relationship with Jesus Christ. For Dr. King, the beloved community is one that is diverse in race, in ethnicity, and that is connected in its connection to social justice for the pursuit of seeing all humanity inclusive, diverse, and one in its striving to see humanity in the eyes of one that is made in the image and likeness of God himself. The Imago Deo is how Dr. Martin Luther King devised and designs what we see as the beloved community. And so it helps us today, beloved, as we talk about the black church and how it matters. It helps us today when we talk about the ways in which as a church family and as a community, we move from this moment that is historic in its time and space by which the church is called to be faithful as its image to acknowledge humanity, space, and time as never before. I submit to you all today that the Church of Jesus Christ has gone through a metaphor, metamorphosis in the last 24 months as it has never been before. That the community of faith that embodies shalom is to share the characteristics of the people of God that shapes and forms race, ethnicity, gender, and class. And that the term shalom that defines completeness in welfare, health, and prosperity has come flat-footed and squarely at the front door of the church of Jesus Christ as never before. And so how we define our connectedness in 2022 is a time by which, beloved, that we must take inventory as never before as what it means to be the beloved community. And so on today, I would offer you that as we look today, then, what did it mean to be the beloved church? That the black church has been working hard in the area of outreach. That when we look at our historical context as the beloved community, that we have been the one that spread the gospel message from generation to generation. In the area of mission, that the black church was the one that visited the sick and the shut-in. That we were the ones that were the instructor of love, forgiveness, grace, and mercy. 
That it was the black church that told and retold the story of God's love for humanity. The church, the black church was busy in the civil rights matters of the abolishment of slavery, civil rights, and the heinous ways in which lynching, segregation was the way in which black men and women were seen as three-fifths of a human being. It was the church that organized around voters' rights and human rights. It was the black church that galvanized the ways in which lunch counter sit-ins were done. It was the church that worked hard at teaching, education, and that taught the young to read and offered affordable child care. It was the church that taught personal and communal development. It was the church that developed faith in terms of sickness and death and taught about patience in the time of injustice. It was the church that nurtured marriage and offered spiritual healing in the time of divorce. It was the church that worked hard at training leaders to give and to support through their tithes and offering. It was the church. The church has come a long way, but it has a long, long way to go. That was the. What about the black church now? For the last 24 months, in this duality of pandemic, that the church doors have been closed. However, many churches have not been able to move beyond the four walls of their sanctuary. Many churches have been closed and not been able to pivot in the ways to use their resources and their call to be disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Many churches have not been able to access the world wide web to use the airwaves to preach and teach and to use discipleship opportunities to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ for those that are around the world. And so for the last 24 months, there have been many who have been absent in the ways in which they have not been able to use their gift and talent and call to be the church for Jesus Christ. So I would say to you on today, I feel that God has sent a reproach upon those churches who have been using or not using the opportunity to stand up and to be the church that God has called for such a time as this. That for those churches who have not used their opportunity to spread the good news, that have used their churches one hour a week and have been closed for the remainder of the week, only one hour on a Sunday morning have they been opened for business, who have closed their doors to all that have been going on around in this world, it is ungodly. For those who have not been engaged in making, uh, uh, being a witness to what is happening in their community, in their world, God is bringing a reproach against them. And so I say to you on today, now is the time by the activation of the Holy Spirit. It is in Zechariah that the word of God says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, that we are called by the movement of the Holy Spirit to engage what God is doing in the world on today. And that we are to move into the highways and byways and to bring the move of God into the places for healing and transformation of the world on today. Now is the time for the world to see the healing power of God as never before. Then, now, and next. The beloved community next. God 
my beloved, is calling for the church to welcome the modern day leopard into the church on today. That the men and women who are returning citizens from being incarcerated, those that are, who have been subject to substance abuse, to prescription medication, he is calling the church to be receivers of those. To those who are unsheltered, God is calling the church to welcome them home. God is calling the church to welcome children who are orphaned and are a part of the welfare and child care system. The God is calling the church to welcome them home. God is calling the church to welcome those who are subjects of domestic violence and child molestation, those who are victims of gang violence and those who are affected by mental health. The astronomical numbers of those impacted by mental health. I will submit to you on today, we have yet to see but a glimpse of those who have been oppressed by mental illness with the numbers of suicide who are in double digits. For those who are impacted, the church in the next iteration of this moment must know that the unconditional love of Jesus Christ is extended to them through the shalom love of Jesus Christ through the beloved community of Christ through the church. So we must move beyond the stereotypes that have narrowed the short-sightedness of the way we have been perceived by the world at large. It is the church's obligation, my beloved, to be reflective of the diversity and that we are to be seen as all of God's people as God sees them. Grace filled with sacred worth that deserve to be loved and that deserve to be heard. All children of God that are loved beyond demographic, labeled, and seen as equal. The church should reflect our Savior with radical hospitality, extending grace, always inviting the circle to be extended to include everyone. Jesus expects us to make a statement to the world, not just in word, but by our action. The thread that holds us together is love. What does love have to do with it? Love, my beloved, has absolutely everything to do with it. When we look at the beloved community on today, when we are reminded of our African American heritage, when we are reminded of the song, God of our weary years, God of our silent 
So on today, my beloved, let love be our new commandment. A commandment that is based on the commandment that Jesus gave his disciples. He said, I give you a new commandment that you are to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. Now this standard is not something that was completely new to them. His disciples would be familiar with this law of love as it was given to them through the law of Moses. Leviticus 19 and 18 states this commandment in the Bible. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the son of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. But Jesus, this night, takes it to a personal level, a higher level. He says, love one another as I have loved you. If Christians loved each other the way that Jesus showed his love to the world, then it will be unmistakable. It will be a love that the world will stand in amazement to see that the world cannot comprehend. Jesus did, just did not say love one another. Jesus was very specific about the kind of love his disciples must share. He said, just as I have loved you, and his love was unconditional. Jesus' love is limitless. Jesus' love was self-sacrificing. The unmistakable factor of his love is portrayed in the cross. Jesus suffered and died for the greatest joy, for the greatest love, rescuing the lost from sin and death. Jesus sacrificed himself out of his love for us. Now, that truly is glorious. And so on today, my beloveds, when we recognize the beloved community, when we recognize the history and heritage and legacy in which we stand on, when we come to know that the birthright by which we stand to lead for generations that are to come. Love has absolutely everything to do with it. Love. I love you. I love you. I love you. And there is not a thing that you can do about it. Beloved, come and behold the love we have for one another. are fastened in the windows pin keep your hand on that plow hold on no one said you done lost your track can't plow straight and keep a looking back keep your hand on that plow and hold on Hold on Hold on Hold on, hold on. Keep your hand on that plow and hold on Hold on
golden chain Every link spell with Jesus' name Keep your hand on that plow and hold on Oh, that chain and never tire Every round goes higher and higher Keep your hand on that plow and hold
if you are to confess and believe. As the word said on today, you become a part of the greatest family of faith. That your name is written in the book of life. And that you will inherit eternal life. And the table that has been prepared for shalom eternally is where you will remain with Jesus Christ for eternity. God bless you. I love you. And there's not a thing that you can do about it. Amen. Good morning, Crossroads family and friends. I bring you now our church announcements. We invite you to join us Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for our corporate prayer and just time of fellowship. If you need to check in, if you just want to get a lab to connect with your family, Mondays at 7 p.m., Wednesday at 7 a.m., and Friday at 12 noon, we encourage you to join in. Give us a call. The number is down at the bottom of the screen. Call in. We laugh together, fellowship, and go before the Lord in prayer. We remind you that our church offices are open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please feel free to stop by. Give us a wave, blow your horn. Also, if you need to pick up uh, tithing offerings or envelopes, if you need to pick up hygiene items or hygiene kits or food items for someone that's in need, now that is the time to do so. We miss you, family. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you. Thanks again for joining us today. We love you.